In this section, we will use the Extract tool to create a 3D path for a concrete rail. Then we will create a profile object and use the Extrude Along Path command to create the rail. Let's start by creating a Rails class. Click on the Classes button in the view bar and create a new class named Rails. Make the new Rails class the active class and click OK. Switch to a top plan view and activate the Extract Surface tool in the 3D Modeling toolset. Enable the Extract Curve mode and select each edge while holding the Shift key as seen here. Once all edges are selected, click the green checkmark button in the toolbar and extract the NURBS curves. The NURBS curves are grouped together. Go to Modify, Ungroup to ungroup the NURBS curves. With all the NURBS curves selected, go to Modify, Compose. Double click on the rectangle tool in the basic palette, set the width to 0.4 and the height to 0.6. Make sure Position at Next Click is checked, and click OK. Click in a blank area to place the rectangle. Select both the rectangle and the NURBS curve. Go to Model, Extrude Along Path. Use the arrows to set the NURBS curve as the path object. Check the Lock Profile Plane option, and click OK. Double click on the Concrete Rail object, select to edit the profile, and click OK. Move the rectangle so the bottom right corner is at x and y equals 0. Click the Profile Exit button in the top right corner of the screen. Note, depending on the curve you created, you may find that the Extrude Along Path object hangs over the edge of the slope. If this is the case, double click on the Extrude Along Path object, select to edit the path, and click OK. Activate the Trim tool in the basic palette and enable the first mode, Point Split Mode. Click along the path to split the NURBS curve. Switch to the Selection tool, select only the end segment, and press Delete. Click Path Exit. Now, let's use the Taper tool to reshape the ends of the rail. The ends of the concrete rail came to an abrupt end. We will taper the ends for a better look. Switch to a left isometric view and zoom in on the right end of the Extrude Along Path. Activate the Taper Face tool in the 3D Modeling toolset and enable the first mode, Tangent Face Mode. We need to use the bottom face of the concrete rail object as the reference face for the taper. Position the cursor over the end of the concrete rail object. To select the subface, hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac. When the bottom surface of the concrete rail highlights in red, click once to set the reference plane. Now, set the taper face to the end face of the concrete rail. Move the cursor to the right and set the taper angle to about 80 degrees. Repeat this action for the other end of the concrete rail. We will create 3D handrails for the steps and slopes of the skate park. Using the Plane Options in Vectorworks, we will create Base 2D Objects and then use the Extrude Along Path and Extrude commands to convert these objects to 3D. First, we need to change the projection setting. We are going to create 2D objects in a 3D view. This will be easier in an orthogonal projection. Go to View, Projection, Orthogonal. Before we draw the path for the rail, we need to change the plane setting. In the view bar, select Screen from the Plane menu. This will draw 2D objects flat on the screen no matter what view is set. Now, switch to a front view, set the Rails class to Invisible, and zoom in on the stairs on the tapered face. Next, let's draw the path for the rail. Activate the Line tool in the Basic Palette, Enable the Unconstrained and Vertex modes in the toolbar. We are going to trace the tapered face below the stairs. Place the cursor at the top step where the top tread intersects the upper level of the concrete base. Click once to start the polygon. 
move the cursor down and to the left along the tapered face. Click once more at the intersection of the bottom step and the concrete base to complete the line. Now we need to move the line up. With the object selected, in the Y field in the Object Info Palette, simply type plus 1 to the right of the current value and press Enter or Return. In most numerical fields, you can perform arithmetic. Vectorworks will calculate the values automatically. Next, let's extend the rail at the top of the stairs. With the Line tool still active, click once at the top endpoint of the line we just moved. Move the cursor to the right, press the Tab key to enter the floating data bar, set the length to 1.25, and press Enter or Return twice to complete the operation. Select both line objects and go to Modify, Compose. We now have our path object. Let's use the Rectangle tool in the Basic Palette to create a profile object for the railing. Double-click on the Rectangle tool and set the width and height to 0.1 and click OK. Click once below the path object to place the profile. Before using the Extrude Along Path command to create the 3D rail, we need to change the plane of the path object. In the Object Info Palette, change the plane to Layer. This will project the object onto a 3D plane that is aligned with our current front view. Select both the Path object and the Profile object and go to Model, Extrude Along Path. Use the Next and Previous buttons to make sure the Path object is highlighted in red, make sure both Lock Profile Plane and Fix Profile are unchecked, and click OK. Now, switch to a Top Plan view. You will see the Rail object is not in the correct position. Click and drag the rail down over the stairs. As you move the rail down, you will see a dotted green extension line appear, and the vertical Smart Cursor queue will be visible. Use this line to maintain the x-coordinate of the rail. Move the cursor over the midpoint of the top step. After a few seconds, a red box will appear indicating that a smart point has been set. Move the cursor to the right along the horizontal dotted red extension line until you intersect the vertical dotted green extension line. When the Smart Cursor queue Vertical slash Aligned V appears, release the mouse button to place the rail. Note, the Smart Point used to align the rail in this section is controlled by the Smart Point Snap option. This and all other snapping options are controlled through the Snapping Palette. If this Snap option is disabled, you will not be able to set a Smart Point. Also, if you do not see the extension lines mentioned in the steps above, go to Tools, Smart Cursor Settings, and ensure both horizontal slash vertical extensions and extension lines are enabled for the Smart Points. Now we will create posts for the rail. Using the extrude command and snapping functions, we will create and place the posts along the rail. First, we will create the base shape for the posts. Double-click on the Rectangle tool. In the Object Settings dialog, set the Control Point Mode to Center and click OK. Place the cursor over the midpoint of the right end of the rail. After a few seconds, a red box will appear, indicating that a smart point has been set. Move the cursor to the left. A marker will appear indicating the center of the upper segment of the rail. The Smart Cursor queue center will appear. After a few seconds, a second smart point will appear. Move the cursor back to the right. A marker indicating the midpoint between the two smart points will appear. Place the cursor over this point. When the Smart Cursor queue midpoint appears, click once to place the rectangle. With the rectangle selected, Go to Model, Extrude, set the extrusion to 1, and click OK. Switch to a front view. You will see the extrude is below the surface of the concrete base. Press the B key to activate the X-ray Select mode. Click and drag the bottom of the extrude and snap it to the top of the concrete base. The post extends slightly inside the rail. Click and drag the rail upward and snap the bottom of the rail to the top of the post. Move and duplicate the post so that the midpoint of the base of the duplicated post intersects the start of the first step. Hold down the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac to duplicate the post while moving it.
place two more duplicates on the fourth step down and the last step down. Snap the base of the posts to the midpoint of the top of the steps. We need to shorten the two posts on the stairs. Select one of the posts on the stairs, place the cursor over the top middle blue control handle, and click once to move the cursor down vertically until the top of the post is completely within the rail. Click once more to move the control point and adjust the height of the post. Repeat this action for the other post on the stairs. Next, we will use the Add Solids command to combine the rail and the posts into a single object and then apply a fill color through the Attributes palette. First, switch to a left isometric view. Select the four posts and the rail. Go to Model, Add Solids. With the rail selected in the Attributes palette, set the fill color to black. Now let's place the completed rail in the Rails class. With the rail selected, in the Object Info palette, click on the Class menu and choose Rails. You will notice that the rail disappeared. This is because the Rails class is currently set to Invisible. Click on the Classes button in the view bar, set the Rails class to Visible, and click OK. Note, you can use the same workflow to create other rails in the file. If you would like to, Use the techniques described above to create two more rails, one in the center of the tapered face and the other on the curved stairs. We will create a long rail using the extrude command and the push-pull tool. Also, we will use the automatic working plane feature to quickly draw all of the objects in a 3D view. First, make sure you are in a left isometric view then activate the Rectangle tool in the Basic Palette and enable the first mode, Corner to Corner Mode. Switch the Plane mode back to Automatic in the Plane menu in the View Bar. This will allow us to draw directly on the plane of the concrete base. Click in the center of the middle level of the concrete base to start the rectangle. Tab into the Floating Data Bar, set the Delta X to 3.25 and the Delta Y to 0 0.15. Press Enter or Return twice to place the rectangle. With the rectangle selected, go to Model, Extrude. Set the extrusion to 0 0.05 and click OK. In the Object Info palette, set the Bot Z to 2. This extrude will be the top of the long rail. Using the Automatic Working Plane feature, along with the Subtract Solids command, we will now create the base of the long rail. Activate the Rectangle tool again and click once in the middle level of the concrete base to start another rectangle. In the floating data bar, enter 0.2 for the delta X and the delta Y. Press Enter or Return twice to place the rectangle. With the rectangle selected, go to Model, Extrude, set the extrusion to 0.05, and click OK. This extrude will become the base of the rail posts. Next, we will use the Circle and the Subtract Solids command to create bolt holes in the base. Activate the Circle tool in the Basic Palette and enable the First Mode, Radius Mode. Place the circle on the left corner of the base, make sure the top surface of the base is highlighted in blue, and press the G key to place a datum. Tab into the Floating Data bar, Set the length to 0 0.045 and the working plane angle to negative 45 degrees. Press Enter or Return and move the cursor to the right. When the Smart Cursor Cube object slash angle slash length appears, click once to start the circle. Tab into the floating data bar, set the length to 0 0.01 and press Enter or Return twice to place the circle. With the circle selected, activate the Mirror tool in the Basic Palette, enable the second mode, Duplicate Mode. We need to draw a mirror line across the base. Click once at the midpoint of the bottom left edge of the base. Move the cursor across the base object. A preview of the duplicate circle will appear. Make sure the working plane angle shows 0, 0.00 and click once to mirror and duplicate the circle. Select both circles 
and repeat the mirror process by clicking once at the midpoint of the top left edge and moving the mouse across the base. The working plane angle will show negative 90 degrees. Now we will use these circles to subtract holes from the base. Select all of the circles, go to Model, Extrude, and set the extrusion to negative 0.05. Hold Shift and select the base to add it to the selection. The four circular extrudes and the base should be selected. Go to Model, Subtract Solids. Use the back and front arrow buttons to make sure the base is highlighted in red and click OK. Next, we will continue to use the automatic working plane and use the automatic push-pull feature to create an extrude for the post. Activate the rectangle tool in the basic palette, enable the second mode, center to corner mode, click once on the top center of the base, tap into the floating data bar, set the delta X and delta Y to 0.05, press enter or return twice to place the rectangle. Without clicking, move the cursor over the rectangle. It will highlight in red. The red highlight indicates that the automatic push-pull mode is active. Click once and move the cursor up. Tab into the floating data bar and enter 0.45 for the distance. Press enter or return twice to extrude the rectangle. Zoom out to see the whole object. Select both the base and the post. Go to Model, Add Solids. Switch to a top plan view. Click and drag the center of the post to the midpoint of the left side of the rail. While still holding the mouse button, press the G key to place a datum. Press Tab to enter the floating data bar. You can now release the mouse button. Enter 0.5 for the length. Press Enter or Return twice to place the post. Now, let's place two duplicates of the post. With the post still selected, activate the Mirror tool in the basic palette and make sure Duplicate Mode is enabled. Move your cursor to the center of the rail. When the Smart Cursor queue Center appears, click once and move the cursor up vertically. Click once to mirror and duplicate the post. Click and drag the center point of the new post to the center of the rail. Press and hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac, then release the mouse button to place the duplicate post. For the long rail, we need to apply a separate fill color to the rail and to the posts, so we will not combine the objects into a single object using the Add Solids command. Instead, we will use the Create Symbol command to group the objects as a symbol resource. First, select the rail and set the fill color to black in the Attributes palette. Now select the rail and the three posts. Go to Modify, Create Symbol. In the Create Symbol dialog, name the symbol Long Rail, choose Next Mouse Click under Insertion Point, and click OK. Click on the bottom midpoint of the center post to set the insertion point. The insertion point controls how the geometry will appear in relation to the mouse click. In the Create Symbol dialog, click OK to save the symbol in this file. Note, the long rail is now saved as a symbol resource. It can be accessed through the resource browser and placed multiple times. In the resource browser, click the home icon once to confirm you are looking at resources in the active document. Open the resources menu under the home icon and set the view as option to thumbnails. Scroll down in the resource display window and locate the long rail symbol in the symbols slash plugin objects section. Place another instance of this symbol on the left side of the lower level of the skate park. Finally, select both of the long rail symbols and change their class to rails in the object info palette. 